Good day, Shaving Cadre. Barber Dave here with Barber Dave's Barbershop at Home. Uh, today is going to be uh, kind of another exciting shave after the uh, huge success of the Desert Vetiver. Except in this one, we're not really using any new software. We're just using a brand new razor, and that is the Occam. And uh, we'll go into that in more detail in a second. And this is going to be going head-to-head -head, uh, with the Vector. So we'll go into some details with that as well. So it might be a little bit of a long video. Uh, as far as the soap today, we're going to use one that I don't use very often that was gifted to me by uh, uh, by somebody a few years ago. And it's Maggard's London Barbershop. And this is actually made by um, uh, Maria Armin for, for them. Uh, for the aftershave, we'll be using uh, Aqua Velva Ice Blue. And then uh, for the EDT, we'll be using Canoe. Now, and the brush will be the Sorrentino Barzini uh, with the cashmere knot, and then, of course, some top. Now, let's talk real quick about barbershop scents. Now, granted, I may be a little bit biased. As a master barber, you kind of get to know these things. And having hung around barbershops as a kid, um, there are a lot of good barbershop scents out there, but many of them miss the mark. Many of them. Because when you think of a barbershop, you should be thinking of one thing as the primary note. And that's that, barbicide. Barbicide is traditionally what you smell, or barbasol, um, which was an old uh, shaving cream that was for the hot lather. So the smells that you should be thinking about are the notes for a true barbershop scent. In an American barbershop would be barbicide, uh, barbasol, uh, the, the smell of a steaming towel, the smell of a hot lather machine, because it does have a fragrance to it. And then, of course, powder. But where most, in my opinion, where most barbershop scents miss the mark is they use a baby powder scent, and then the dry down is just powder. The powder that's used in uh, barbershops, at least in the United States, is 99.9% .9 this stuff right here, or Jarrus. And this has a flavor to it. Now, you, you throw in what most barbershop, bar barbers use as an aftershave to seal up the, you know, to, to seal the shave, your neck shave, is uh, Clubman or Parasso. So you want to have a sharp scent and not that hugely powdery dry down, especially uh, baby powder. I'm not going to mention any names of, of soap manufacturers that have missed the mark. Uh, I'm not going to make any uh, statements on uh, who has really got it right. But, you know, walk into a barbershop, an old time barbershop and take a big whiff and you'll find that a lot of these barbershop scents that we see on the market, which are hugely popular, really don't get it um because a london barbershop is going to be a little bit different an italian barbershop is going to be different than an american barbershop the one that hits the american marks the best are ones that you know very very well it's just that the powder is what um kind of ruins a lot of them now um london barbershop does a pretty good job um so uh, that's a good thing okay let's talk about the occam and the vector these are the ones that are going head to head over the next two days uh, much different, totally different. The Occam is very well balanced. It's very futuristic. I did get it in the black DLC. Uh, and actually the way it's suggested to hold the razor is different. So we'll try that. The Vector is just perfection. It's, it's weighty. It's nice. It's balanced perfectly. It's, it's balanced like a sword. Um, it, 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 it's just perfect. The head is small. So, uh, there's been a lot of claims that the Occam and the Hiram are better than the Vector. And then the flip side of it says, no, not even close. So, we're going to find out for my opinion. Uh, the one thing I noticed right out of the gate is the head on the uh, Occam is huge. Now, this is very reminiscent uh, because I guess I should preface this by saying I don't think, in my opinion, that you will ever get as close a shave, as long as a longer uh, a longevity of a shave than you will with a straight razor. Now, there is a price to pay for that. One, more concentration, more time, and the more chance for injury. Now, can these injure you? Sure, but not like a straight razor can. So during the week, if you got to go to work real quick, doing a straight shave fast can be done, but it's not advisable. You want to enjoy that shave. So the next step down would be the single edge razors. Now, we're not mentioning the old style single edge razors like the gems and the stars and stuff like that. Those are on a level by themselves. These are the newfangled feather style uh, single edge razors. Now, the first one that I had was the um, Asylum RX. And I thought I had died and gone to heaven. A beast, a monster, heavyweight. It just mowed through everything. It was beautiful. Then I saw this. And I kind of like the minimalistic, spacey features. And it's such a thin head that you can just race around your face like it's nothing. 
And this became the king. And it, it, it still is, as far as my SE Ragers are concerned. Again, not counting the old stuff. Uh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's a piece of art and it, and it shaves perfectly. It's, and I had mentioned this in a video that it was probably the closest I've ever gotten to a straight shave by a SE, you know, handheld razor. Then I started seeing the buzz about this. I was going to do the pass around, but I'm very impatient. So I went ahead and bought it. And I don't have a black razor other than an old black beauty that I need to restore. Um, the one thing I noticed right out of the gate is that I'm using plate number two, which I guess is kind of mid range. And um, the gap, the blade gap, is a little bit of a different angle, and it doesn't look like it'll be quite aggressive. So I may end up moving this to three. However, the thing that intrigued me about this was the floating blade, because obviously this is a very rigid blade, and the angles are dependent on how you do the shave, where this has got a floating blade. Now we'll see how much it floats, but with a floating blade, it'll follow the contours of your skin. Uh, that had a very intriguing point, and I know that uh, KJ had said that that was a big game changer for him. Now, I've heard others say that it just doesn't do it because the head's so big you can't get into certain spots. Um, I also noticed when I first got it, before I watched any videos, when I put the blade in, and that's one thing I will say, the blade in and out is so easy compared to this. Um, because after a while, you know, you have to pry the head apart and if you don't get it on right and, and plus I worry because of the, the smallness of it, you got to be real careful how you screw the threads on because it's not a completely, uh, diametered, um, screw post. It's actually square or rectangle. So that's, uh, that's one thing. But other than that, the design and the shave is amazing. So moving on to the Occam, uh, I call it the Lord Commander now because it looks, you know, like something you'd see at Castle Black, but it also looks like, I think, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Mountain Man or somebody said, you know, where'd you get the cheese grater? And you're right. It looks like a cheese grater. And could you use it as a cheese grater? Sure. Slice, cracker, you're done. Um, but I'm using the Feather Pro Guard blade and I'll tell you why. For my skin, it's the best. I've used all of them. The Pros, the Supers, the Kais. The Supers are way too aggressive for me. Uh, the uh, Pros are okay, but the I, I don't want to feel too much of the blade, and the Pro Guards are perfect. I use these in the shop every day. I use them, I mean, I, they, to me, they've got the best feeling shave overall. So, um, the, but the one thing I noticed with these, and I know it was mentioned on um, the Occam site, that you put the blade in, and all of a sudden you shake it, and it's like, ting -a -ting -a -ting, and, it's like and, and I hate that. I mean, it's like finding a rattle in a car. Um, so I did see that what you do is you, bl you bend the blade a little bit before you snap it in, and it did shake. Now you can't hear it. So, so that's uh, that's kind of the uh, the onus behind this. So we'll see how uh, how good this works. Um, the brush has been soaking, and it is a cashmere knot. And uh, um, this soap has always really been good to me. Um, it lathers easy. It's got a very nice lather. Um, the smell is still. It, you you smell the barbicide, you smell the alcohol, you smell the the barber scents, but it's still very powdery. And that, like I said, you know, working and being in a barbershop shop every day, um, you get you get accustomed to a certain smell. And uh, this one, although closer than some, um, is uh, not dead on. The closest one that I've seen, I'm not going to tell you because it wouldn't be fair to the other manufacturers. Um, but I think you all know who it is. So, like I said, this lathers very, very well. Um, and uh, pretty good on the proof. And I know there's been some talk by uh, one of our uh, retailers about doing a pass around with the... Uh, um, cashmere knot. If you have not, uh, to me, the cashmere knot is by far the, the best synthetic knot for a face feel. Um, it is just, it's tremendous. I mean, it's, it's softer. I mean, it's not a real scritchy uh, at all, but it is just wonderful on the face. And fit into a, a barbershop style handle like the Barzini uh, just makes it perfect. So lots of good lather. Um, I'm making this a little bit thicker just because I don't know the characteristics of this razor yet. 
so we'll see. A uh, couple of new things on the form you guys have probably noticed. Um, we have a, uh, a member affairs section, so please check that out. Um, it's for announcements from Chris, Chad, and I. And you'll also notice that we have a new, um, a new member uh, called the Shaving Cadre Honors. Basically, we had been posting a lot of our stuff individually, which is fine because we still talk to each other before we make any posts. But uh, we wanted to have more, something more consistent, especially for the newer members that they can see. Um, those posts will be non-reply simply because they're announcements. Um, so check that out. And so we'll be consolidating some things just to make things easier on the site for you guys. And then also, um, there's been talk of the shaving shirt. Uh, I should have, um, I should say we, uh, the prototype should be done today, this evening, and I'll take a look at it. Uh, you know, taking for granted, you know, taking in all that uh, you guys have suggested. Uh, now, I know a lot of you are saying, why the hell do we need a, a shaving shirt? Well, as I said on the forum, you know, when we post videos, we're not going to post them without having clothing on. And a lot of people ruin their shirts. I mean, you know, I wouldn't say ruin, but... And it would be nice to support the cadre with a, something that will say, you know, excess lather goes here and our logo and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that. It should be posted. I should be able to get it, um, you know, we'll hammer out the details of the design and we should get it posted and up for sale, hopefully by tonight or tomorrow. And then um, what else? Oh, don't forget, it's only for three days. Make sure that you go over to the dark room and vote on uh, the photo contest. This is our first photo contest and it was black and white. We had 11 entries with only one entry you can't vote on or uh, please don't vote on. Uh, and uh, these guys took some fantastic photos. Um, and so please vote for your favorite. And then basically what the winner will get is the winner will get to choose what the um, theme is for the following week. We're probably going to do some prizes at some point, but for right now, just that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, on the they, they recommend that you follow the, the angle of your finger and kind of hold it like this with your thumb here. That seems really weird to me, but we'll try it just to see what happens. I'll probably go back to a regular grip, but it does put it right at the right angle, though. Well, very smooth. Um, it is un it is ungainly, though. It is big. And I have to go back to the other way, go on the other side. This is a big razor. In fact, to me, it seems bigger than the Asylum, especially in the head. Oh, and I should say that this feather blade that I have in here um, is uh, the first time. It does clear lather very well, and it rinses very clean. I will say that compared to the... Uh, the um, the vector, but here's the, here's the kicker. I mean, this seems awfully big to get under here. Not bad. Um, missed a few spots that I'll get on the second pass, but, um, right out of the gate, um, it does cut well. It's smooth. It's very, very, it's very maneuverable. Is it, is it as maneuverable as a vector? No, not even close. Um, to me, I had, I had made mention way back when that if the vector was a Ferrari or a Formula One car, I should say, the Asylum was a 57 a 57 Chevy fire-breathing monster supercar or hot rod. I would put this in the realm of, oh, well, I don't know. It's big, it's ungainly. But I will say it also, you are right at the perfect angle uh, almost immediately holding this. And I would not recommend holding it the way they suggest 
at least for me, let's just wait till I'm comfortable. Go just wear it or hold it the way you would a regular razor. But it does get the angle dead on. Um, that's one thing with the the uh, vector that you know you have to play with the angle a little bit. This one you just boom put it on your face. So this is much more like a gem in that respect. And of course I've got a little bit of bias because once you get used to the vector, that is a pretty big nut to crack. Because engineering wise, I have not seen a more perfect designed razor. As far as overall shea is concerned, um, I thought, I feel like I'm missing some spots, um, but that could be just because of the size and the angle and it's a new, a new blade. And the fact that I've gotten to know the vector, you know, where it's just mindless, because most of the time I use the vector almost on a daily basis during the work week, because I just don't have the time. I mean, I'll try to get a straight shave in, but I just don't have the time usually, so the vector usually is one. So I'm using that almost all the time. As far as face feel is concerned, it does, the, the number two plate does feel much milder to me. Uh, so I'll probably switch that for the next shave to the number three. But blade contact feels good. Angle is, I will give the the ease of getting the angle right to the uh, to the Occam. I will definitely give it that. Um, but the fact that I'm missing some spots, I think lends to the size of the head. Uh, as far as the blade flex and feel on the face, feels good. I don't really notice that the blade's flexing with my contours. Um, if it is, I'm not noticing it. And like I said, I think that's just a matter of getting used to it. But definitely, I, I won't hold it the way they suggest. It's much easier just to hold it like a regular razor. I understand the concept behind it. And if you're doing just with the grain passes, you know, I guess you could. But I think most of us are uh, experienced enough in shaving that, you know, we know what angle we're going to use. Uh, I will give points for it being able to rinse easy. Uh, one little dip in the water and it's done. But it is easy to maneuver. Uh, I do like the black DLC. I like the look of it. It's futuristic. And as I said, it's comfortable, but if, if I was to say, oh, I can feel the blade flexing, no. Certain, certain areas I notice that uh, I miss, and I don't know if that's because I'm just still getting used to the head of this, but it just doesn't, first impression is it does not give quite the closeness of the vector, but again, that may not be the razor, that may be technique. But I find certain angles, especially in my chin area, which I never miss, I find myself missing. Uh, neck is still, you know, typical. But they're close. I mean, it, the, shave, the shave is close. Um, so overall, very nice razor, very easy to wield. Uh, is it better than the Vector? Does it give a better shave? Uh, in first impression, no. Um, but again, 
I am very, I mean, it's still a BBS, definitely a DS BBS shave. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, the, the, the vector, the vector just seems so much easier to, and it's a heavier razor, and it just seems so much easier to get around the face. So I'm going to reserve judgment right now uh, until I get to know it better, because that wouldn't be fair um, to the Occam. I like the look of it. I think it's great. Uh, it's got that cool black Lord Commander look, so I like it. Um, is it something I'll use? Sure. Uh, but will it be um, enough to unthrone the vector? First impression says no, but I'll uh, I'll go through that. Uh, the London Barbershop's wonderful. Good post shave feel. Tons of lather left left over if uh, if you know you want to shave an army. Um, you know, another thing I should say is usually with the uh, the Feather Pro blades, usually takes one or two shaves for me to to get in a groove with how they feel on my face, and that was a brand new blade. So, but you know, close. But just the feeling um, is what may change things for me. Uh, Aqua Velva Ice Blue in my vintage bottle. We are going to be 107 today, I think. So I wanted a barbershop style shave that was cooling. And... Uh, my wife follows the adage of she likes her aqua velma, man, but just not with aqua velma. Go figure. Okay, we'll let that dry a little bit. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, using the talc. Um, some of you may have seen I've got some new talc coming uh, made by Parasso, which is rosemary and mint. So that should be neat. And then I've got some other uh, little things coming. Um, but uh, talc's good stuff. Oh, why not? A little bit more. Oh, also, don't forget we started bingo today. I haven't even had a chance to look at it yet. But uh, Gear Noir, Chris, is running the bingo game. And I think he's got a few cards left. So if you haven't joined in, please do so. Oh, killer. Yeah, very good DSBBS shave. I don't think it's going to come down to shave quality. I think it's going to come down to uh, ergonomics on um, how I wield the razor. But again, I'm going to wait until I get to know it a little bit better. Uh, Canoe EDT, um, just a fantastic old style, you know, smells like a barber shop. So I usually will slather this on. Not that I'm going anywhere because we can't after eight o'clock for the next week. So, okay, that's our shave for today and our first impressions of the Occam versus the uh, Vector. Um, so far, nice razor, fun to use, but not quite the Ferrari. I would say this is kind of like a Ford Bronco um, where the Asylum was like a 57 Chevy. Now, you know what, I'll say this is a Chevelle. Uh, but this is definitely a Formula One Ferrari uh, all the way. So right now, initial impressions are that the Vector uh, still wins. But I'm going to give it a few more shaves just to see what happens. So that's it. Uh, Cadre, thank you so much for being members of theshavingcadre.com. If you haven't uh, seen us, please check us out, www.theshavingcadre.com. Uh, look out for the shirt. It'll probably be sometime tonight. All right. Thanks again, folks. Have a great day.